Hey, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Past is Alive, a weekend recap. Picked up some more decent stuff this weekend on this extended holiday weekend. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Sort of take some time and go over everything that I bought over the last few days. Eric and I spent a decent amount of time outside Pennsylvania. Went to Ohio three times over the last few days. Starting out on uh, July 4th out in Hartville, Ohio which were advertising a thousand vendors and 30,000 customers. But to our surprise, when we got there, there was not that many vendors at all compared to the previous weekend we went. So didn't have a whole lot of luck there. Did find some cards and some other stuff, but that was day one. Day two, I went out to Rogers by myself, took the day off work, or actually with Brittany, took the day off work, went out there, picked up some more stuff. And then, uh, yesterday, Eric and I went back to Hartville and, uh, Found a couple more things, and today, um, back to Ohio again, and went to Four Seasons and found some more stuff. So, pretty active uh, weekend of traveling there, and uh, got a lot of good stuff. So, start going over this uh, piece by piece here. We have a bunch of packs to rip open, big stack in the back there, as you can't really see. Uh, some 90s toys, some grab bags, uh, which were picked up in Hartville on day one. Uh, some singles, Hall of Fame singles for five cents. We're going to go through that stack. Um, some rookies and all kinds of cool stuff. So my buddy Joe's in the stream. Hey, Joe. Joe's Card Corral. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. And everybody else that's popping in to spend this Sunday evening with us going over stuff and everything else. But first off, we'll start eliminating some of the stuff in the front here. You guys may have seen these or may not have. They're kind of exclusive and rare. These just came out within the last week. My girlfriend, Brittany, who's in the stream, picked these up for me uh, yesterday at FYE in the mall. Four bucks a vial. This is brand new released ectoplasm for, uh, I'm guessing it's for to promote the um, new Ghostbusters 2020 movie, movie coming out next June. But ectoplasm pretty sick. I always buy these when I see them. They're hard to find. Um, you guys might remember the ectoplasm when we were kids in the 80s um, and like the Play-Doh type can that's now worth a very lot of money or a huge, huge sum of money for each can of those. Um, this is a new release and each one of these has different small figures and you can't really see them real well. I'm trying to find the best one here. I think this one's probably the best. See one of the terror dogs in there and stay puffs in one and so on and so forth. These are all four colors, Brittany. Uh, bought for me so pretty stoked on those i'm gonna go out and actually buy the whole box and get a case of them for display because usually um those tend to go up in value over time like a lot so happy to have those so appreciate that Brittany. um and then rogers ohio this is a dollar table this is a slimer sour candy tin these are from 2009 never had these never could find them anywhere all this Ghostbusters stuff is very exclusive. Obviously, no candy in here. It's long gone, but um, pretty cool novelty item there. Probably put change in there or something else. Picked that up on a dollar table. Um, Rogers on Friday picked this up too. Couldn't pass it up for 50 cents. Money more from Power Rangers tape. Name tape. Uh, property of. This is from 1994. Love this novelty item, especially if it's under a buck. So... Uh, had to pick that up. There's different stickers on there. I thought that was kind of cool. Used to like Power Rangers when I, was, when I was younger. A decent amount in the mid-90s. I was thinking I was like 10 years old. And they got into all the different sub-series and all, everything else. Here's a $2 Super Chat from Donald Blomdahl that says, Gotta go to church, John. Catch a replay later. Thanks a lot, Donald Blomdahl. Really appreciate that. Please uh, click on that Super Chat and give him a sub when you get a second. I think he's trying to get it, work his way up to 333 subs there, and I'm getting pretty close. I really appreciate that, Donald. And um, so, like I said, some grab bags here. Pick those up. We're we'll gonna rip those open here in a second. Um, these two things were from uh, Four Seasons today. Eric had a pretty good score there too. This guy has like a junk room uh, next to the or at the end of a pavilion. And he had a bunch of cards. He usually has nothing that we uh, are interested in most of the time, but. I like these older 90s inserts, so I was like, whatever, I'll pick these up. I think I paid a buck fifty for both of these, or a piece. There's some Hall of Famers in here. I used to love uh, early Pinnacle. Bagwell is on top here. A lot of no names, too, but Jim Tomey, second year card. Phil Plantier was a hot name back then. So there's a lot of repeats, not our Bagwell. 
Smoltz. Some Hall of Famers in here. Bernie Williams, not a Hall of Famer, but a solid ball player. Frank Thomas. So, yeah, I figure I couldn't pass these up. Another Frank Thomas, Greg Maddox. And there's not a whole lot of value to these. A couple bucks, you know, for the big names. Pudge Rodriguez. But still pretty cool nonetheless. Mike Mussina, second year card. So there's some decent ones in here and a lot of repeats. I was hoping that they'd be a good bit of the set. This insert set is huge, though. There is um, 80 cards in this insert set. Larry Walker definitely is in there as well, Paul. 80 cards in this insert set, so a big one. And... Um, I knew these weren't too valuable, but I was just checking out an older uh, almanac earlier, and I thought it was pretty funny. A lot of reason people, or a lot of people hate uh, Beckett. They never change their prices, as Eric and I both said before recently. So this is pretty funny. And here you have Pinnacle Team 2000, which is the set, or you know the inserts that I bought. You see Musina, buck twenty-five. Thomas, buck twenty-five. Podge, buck twenty-five. And then you scroll over to the other side. And you have prices that still are unchanged as 92. For whatever reason, you have a Brian Jordan card listed at two bucks, a Chad Curtis at a dollar. So the Brian Jordan card at two bucks overtakes the Mussina, overtakes the Pudge, overtakes the Hall of Famers in the set. And Chad Curtis, for whatever reason, still books at a buck. So prices that are unchanged probably since 92, which I thought was pretty hilarious. Got a kick out of that. Here's a $10 super chat from Jonathan H. It says, This, what you should have paid for them. You made out, man. Well, thanks so much, Jonathan H. Really appreciate that. Please click on that super chat. Give him a sub. Got a lot of cool videos. He's doing like a nostalgia series now. He just ripped the whole box in 91 per deck. I saw pulled the Michael Jordan short print. Um, pretty awesome. And then this next stack, you have a lot of the same cards here. Um, just repeats, but I figure I'll send these off to subscribers. Keep some for myself. Dave Justice, I know there's some Dave Justice fans out there. There's that Brian Jordan, legendary Brian Jordan card. It's supposedly still books at two bucks. Greg Maddox, Pudge Rodriguez, Larry Walker. So a lot of the same names. No Griffey. I feel like the Griffeys were pulled out of all the stuff that were at that uh, flea market in that section. They had like sets of 89 tops traded. All the cards were in there, missing the Griffeys. Eric picked up a, a full set of 89 Fleer. Pretty sure the Griffeys probably not in there, but he didn't, he didn't go through all the cards and check it out. Brian Jordan, he had a solid career, one-time All-Star, uh, almost a 300 batting average overall. But still, for his cards, he's worth more than a Hall of Famer. Mike Mussina, Pudge Rodriguez, Frank Thomas, uh, pretty crazy. But anyways, moving right along, those were some pickups from today. Um, bouncing back to the Hartville uh, show, or flea market, on uh, July 4th. Picked up these two. Didn't hope, find a whole lot there. Like I said, I thought this was a great deal. These are a buck a piece. Jerry Kuzman, 1969 Tops Gold Cup card. So second year Jerry Kuzman. You guys might uh, be familiar with Jerry Kuzman. He shares a rookie card with Nolan Ryan. Pretty iconic card there. Let me slash these open here. Not sure why he taped them like this with freaking scotch tape. But... Trying to bang these corners up, even though the Kuzman's probably already in pretty trashy shape. But still, nice uh, little pack here for a buck. This guy said that he bought a big collection off of somebody. There's a Hank Aaron reprint card from Topps. There's a Kuzman. So not in the best shape. Kind of rounded off corners. And uh, I don't really see any creases, but still cool gold cup card from Jerry Kuzman. 69 Topps on top there. That was pretty sweet. And then we have uh, what I figured we would have, a bunch of commons. Some vintage comments here from the 70s. Molly Bonds. And then we get into some more junk wax era cards here. Um, gold medallion card, Brian Rose. These are kind of cool. Never seen these before. Um, probably early 2000s, Fleur Ultra. Actually, yeah, 2000 Fleur Ultra. It's kind of a cool card. Tom Bernanski. And nothing really else too great in there. Here's the Hank Aaron reprint. But the Kuzman alone I thought was pretty good. It's like a $3 card, basically, in that shape. Probably not so much, but still cool nonetheless. Here's another Super Chat from Jonathan H. For 5 bucks. is trivia for everyone. And the Angels wanted Seaver or Kuzman, but settled for Nolan. I think they did fine. <laughs> Thanks so much, man. I think all of us can agree with you on that. Let me slash this next one open here. I think a lot of people will like this one. You got Conseco, 86 top trade on the front of this one. Which, if I see this card for a dollar, I usually always buy it. It's a really hot card back when we were younger. 
Still a lot of Conseco fans out there, so I'll probably end up sending that off to somebody that requests it at some point. This guy just, these grab bags are just really awful. It's cool that you can see what cards on the in, inside and outside, or I mean on the on the ends, but look at that tape job. I mean, what's, that's not necessary. Get some, you know, go spend two bucks and get some team bags. So you got Conseco Rookie, 86 top straight on one side there, which is pretty nice, not in terrible shape. These, these ones are tough to get perfect because of the black border on top. But still, for a buck, not bad at all. Here's a $2 Super Chat from Mess of Things. Ever see piles of photo slides for cheap at flea markets? Thank you very much for that, Mess of Things. You know what? I really don't see those very often. Something I don't really ever come across. Let me fix this a little bit so you guys can see a little better. Phil Necro, 86 tops on the other side. Phil Necro's Hall of Famer. Bob Walk, Joe's Card Corral. He actually has that as his profile picture. <laughs> on YouTube, Bob Walk, Danny Tarbell, it's actually uh, his rookie card. So these are all 86 tops traded. Maybe there would be something else decent in here. Not a nice rookie, probably not. Nothing else too great in there, but like I said, the Conseco alone was worth a buck for me. So some decent grab bags. So I picked that up, those up at Hartville the first day, and then... Um, the same day, this is all I got on July 4th. It was pretty slim pickings. This is a pretty cool toy line you don't really ever see very often, at least not out in the wild. Stone protectors, these are from 1993. Moen Surf Attack scooter with the original KB Toys sticker on it. KB Toys had some good deals back in the day. Three for five bucks. So far better deals than uh, Toys R Us had. Toys R Us was always a very expensive toy store. And now this one's not sealed, but it is still um, boxed inside which is nice so it's new in box this is pretty cool so there it is everything's still strapped down i got paid like seven or eight bucks for this so if any of you guys remember uh this toy line so pretty cool for a 1993 vehicle there from a kind of a long forgotten toy line there these were basically made to compete with treasure trolls that were mostly marketed towards uh girls back then this was the uh, more manly version of Trolls. So that was, uh, those were the three things I picked up at Hartville the first day. And then, what else do we got here? We'll throw these out of the way now. Today, Eric and I went to Youngstown, like I said. I've been wanting this card since probably the mid to late 90s. Uh, 93 Pinnacle Derek Jeter. Finally I was able to pick it up today for my PC. Um, I think this card definitely will increase in value once he gets in the hall here soon. Um, Somehow never came across this when I was younger, and to buy a box of these now is just uh, pretty expensive. I noticed that just yesterday I was checking out boxes, 93 Bowman. They've doubled in price um, within the last month, I'm guessing, because of the Jeter and him going to the hall soon. Um, they're all going to start going up, so that was a nice Jeter. I always wanted that since I was a little kid. Stokes picked it up. I think I paid 15 bucks for it. The guy wanted 20 but uh, I think he still picked those up on eBay for about 15 bucks, free shipping. Um, ungraded like that. And the second one, I thought this was a great pickup too. 92 Tufts traded Nomar Garcia Parra rookie card for a buck. I thought that was great. I remember this, this card at one point, um, book value was over 100 bucks. I think it was like even reached like 120, 125 dollars at one point. Um, not too long after the set came out, Eric and I got this for Christmas as kids, hoping that Wakefield rookie card would be in it. They never actually made a Wakefield for Tufts traded for 92, but we ended up with the Nomar Garcia Parra, which is. Probably the best card in the set. You have that in Jason Veritek. So that was good for a buck. Never really come across that card. It's 92 tops traded. So that was pretty sweet. And then also at um, Rogers on Friday. Didn't have a whole lot of luck there. Like I said, picked up a few things here and there. But there was one card vendor there. He had a nice quarter bin, a nice five cent bin. And I think this was out of actually out of the nickel bin. Hideo Nomo 95 Upper Deck Rookie Card. I never had this card. Um, I don't even know if I've ever seen it. But had to scoop that for my PC. Nice Nomo Rookie for a nickel. Couldn't pass that up. And then um, most of these were a nickel, too. So Johnson 89 Tops Rookie Card. Can't pass these up. Even though I have a bunch of them. I'm sure a lot of you guys have a lot of these cards, too. Um, still for a nickel for Hall of Fame Rookie Cards. I can't. You can't beat it. I, I won't walk away from those. Pudge Rodriguez, 91 Fleer Ultra. Um, this is actually the update set, but it's not at the same time. This is actually a platinum 20th anniversary of Fleer, which I didn't see that when I first went through. I was like, that's sick. Pudge Rodriguez rookie for five cents. 
and then I came back and saw it later on. Still cool, regardless, so it's a reprint. Another nice one here, Eric Davis, 85 Tops rookie card. This was definitely a really hot card back in the day and in, in the 80s. Five cents, shilling, 89 Don Ross rookie for a nickel. Another nice one here. You don't see too many of these, very often at least. The uh, Leaf Don Ross Hybrid 87 uh, Palmyra rookie card. So I always liked this card. Had to pick that up. I don't think I have that one on my PC, the Leaf version. So pretty sweet. And then a bunch of 89 Fleer uh, rookies for a nickel. We got a couple or several Gary Sheffields. Not a high value card, but still Sheffield rookie for a nickel. I'm not going to turn it down. Here's a $2 super chat from Chad Hopkins that says, Good day, card show. Fan mail Friday should be fun for all. Well, thank you so much, Chad. I definitely got your email that you picked up some good stuff. Looking forward to seeing uh, what you got, man. should definitely consider making a video showing uh, what you picked up, doing a recap. That'd be pretty awesome. I think people would like that a lot. John Smoltz, rookie cards here, 89 Fleer. A bunch of those for a nickel. And some Biggios. So all those for a nickel piece. Couldn't uh, couldn't turn them down. And a Croc 87 Don Ross rookie, also for a nickel. Here's another nice one you don't see too often. Juan Gonzalez, 89 Tops debut with the 90 Tops uh, design there. Kind of a weird uh, oddball set there. I don't remember ever seeing these whenever I was younger. So for a nickel, had to pick it up. Another Sheffield rookie, but 89 Don Russ this time for a nickel. Um, Smoltz, 89 Bowman rookie card. Nice one there. And a Jim Abbott. Always like Jim Abbott. His rookie card for a nickel. And another Crook. And a Jay Moyer rookie card. Jay Moyer had a solid pitching career. 87 Don Russ. So a big stack of cards. Like I said, most of those were a nickel. And um, couldn't go wrong. I think I paid a little bit of a buck for everything. So... Nice little stack of cards there. A lot of Hall of Famers and whatnot. Couldn't go wrong. And moving right along, some more pickups at Rogers. Some action figures here. You guys might remember these. Biker Mice from Mars from 93. These are actually getting more and more valuable. Uh, this is on a dollar table. I had to pick it up from my mantle. I have a big uh, collection of different action figures. Loose. I, don't, I never really collected loose action figures until recently. I started displaying them. So I had to pick that up. That's Vinny from Biker Mice from Mars. For a buck. And then, can't go wrong with Jack Slater. Last action hero. Love this movie. I think it's super underrated with the awesome judo chop. Jack Slater. If you've never seen Last Action Hero, definitely check it out. Um, it could be a, a bit cheesy at times, but it's a sick uh, action film from 93. I like that one a lot. I used to watch it all the time when I was younger. And here's a pretty sick piece right here, which... Um, Great deal on this. This was on the dollar table with the same table as two action figures and the Slimer Sours tin. A buck for Talk Girl. You guys might remember having Talk Boy when you were younger. Well, it's the same exact thing, except this is geared towards girls. That's why it's pink. That's why it's Talk Girl. But um, a buck for that. Amazing deal. You guys might remember playing around with the microphone on here and slowing your voice down. But super good deal. These uh these sell up. I mean, these sell between like fifty and five hundred bucks. If you go on eBay sold listings, one of these in this condition, used condition, sold for it was a best offer, but it was like five hundred dollars plus shipping. Not sure what it sold for, but they sell regularly for about fifty bucks. So I had to pick that up, um, flip that on eBay, use some of the money to cover the costs of what I bought, everything else from my collection. I like doing that, finding stuff, and uh, sell it to cover the cost of things that I collect overall. So. Here's a two dollar super chat from Jonathan H. It says, "Dude, a talk girl so rare compared to Talk Boy." <laughs> Thanks so much, man. Yeah, the Talk Girl definitely was super rare. Still is. I also saw a Talk Boy at the same exact place at Rogers in the box. The box was kind of beat up. The lady wanted fifty bucks for it, um, which I should have bought. They sell for like two hundred fifty dollars, so could have bought that one and, and sold it. I still have my original Talk Boy at my parents' house, um, not in the box, so obviously, but pretty sweet. Next pickup at Rogers on Friday. Never seen this weird novelty thing. Had to buy it, especially when I saw the Farmore sticker on it, which is sick. Don't have anything with a Farmore sticker on it. Love Farmore when I was younger. There's a toothbrush holder and faucet fountain from The Adventure of Batman and Robin, which um, succeeded uh, the animated series. I think this started in actually 95 is when The Adventure of Batman and Robin uh, first came on the air. But this is pretty cool. Never seen it. 96 so this is from 96 never seen it but uh i ended up getting it for three bucks 
Thought it was a pretty cool novelty piece for my collection, especially the Farmore sticker. Joe's Car Cross's Batman Beyond was was a pretty good show. I never really watched Batman Beyond. My buddy um, is going through and watching it now. He said it's pretty good. Couldn't get into it just because of the whole, I don't know, a lot of changes came about. But here I always hear it was a pretty dark, uh, dark show. Hey, CLG he says, is the, is the Top Boy, is that what Kevin used in Home Alone? It definitely is. It's Home Alone 2 he used that. Um, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, is when the Top Boy became very uh, popular. And I had to have one. I did get one. I don't think I used it very long. I actually kind of wanted to test this thing out and see if it still worked. I mean, I, I imagine it does. Flip that open there, throw the cassette tape in there. It takes four AA batteries. So I'll probably clean this up and uh, throw it online and see if any, there's any takers. I need to keep it. I mean, it's a nice piece of uh, 90s history. And then uh, another pickup from today, um, Four Seasons. These are pretty cool. You guys might remember these from your childhood. These are from 1991. Toxic High School um, sticker cards. Here's a ten dollars super chat from Bill Sites and says, "Hey John, I'm exhausted. I sorted through thousands of hockey, basketball, and football cards. I dread starting to tackle my baseball cards. Thirty-five years and counting. I wish I had stopped along the way." Thanks so much for that ten dollars super chat, Bill Sites. That does sound exhausting. I know I get exhausted just doing uh, sorting through cards for breaks and whatnot, and everything that I have. I was going through cards earlier, moving things around and whatnot, and definitely takes a lot out of you and beats up your eyes. <laughs> so. Thanks again for that super chat, Bill Sites. Try to get try to get a good night of sleep tonight, man. So these toxic high school sticker cards, um, cards that uh, your teachers definitely didn't want you to get your hands on back then. These weren't around too long, but I figured we'd rip a pack of these open, check them out. And one of my tiers on Patreon is going to have um, non sports card packs in it thrown in there. So probably end up putting some of these in there in the future. We'll take a look at these. So you have different classmates with funny names, most lit up, heaviest breather, um, greasiest hair, home and coming queen. So these are kind of like along the same lines as garbage pail kids, hardiest appetite. And there's the stickers. And then these are at the actual uh, cards. Our principal, he gives us love. He earns our respect. The dart stuck to his head and um, science fair frog face lift. <laughs> so these are kind of weird. There's the backs of them. It's made by Tops in 91. And it has little backstories for them. I thought that was pretty cool. Figured I'd pick those up. Like uh, finding non-sports boxes for decent prices. I think I paid 8 bucks for that. So not too bad. Not too bad at all. And then I had to go go and get this one. I used to buy some of these when I was younger. These boxes are usually like 5 bucks for a box. The lady threw this in for like a dollar or two because she didn't have proper change. I was like, whatever, I'll take that. Somebody actually sent me a set of these um, not too long ago. I want to say it was a subscriber named Rusty. 88 cards in a set. All baseball-related cards, kind of along the same lines as Garbage Pail Kids. And uh, also those Toxic High cards. So pretty cool there. Hey, Polly Junk Wax, welcome to the stream. And you can see in the back here we have a dirty vintage Budweiser handbag that I had to pick this up. These are... Pretty valuable. Funny story behind this particular design. It was probably about seven or eight, eh, maybe five or six years ago. I came across a Budweiser suit blazer jacket. With the same exact logo, same exact design, print everything. Uh, the suit jacket from, I'm not sure what era it was from. It was vintage, maybe 70s, 60s even. I uh, paid five bucks for it, Salvation Army. And um, I was going to keep it, but it didn't quite fit me. So I threw it on eBay for 10 bucks. And ended up selling for $530 for the suit jacket. So it was a huge turnaround. And then I had to get my car inspected, and I think I spent like 500 bucks on that. So <laughs> flushed it all down the drain immediately. But this was a dollar. Couldn't walk away from that. I'm going to clean that up some. And then uh, probably throw it on eBay, see what I can fetch for it. Throw it on a, as an auction on there. But it's older Budweiser stuff. You find the uh, right buyers. You can go for quite a good bit of money. So I had to get that today. And it's absolutely disgusting. And then we have a giant rack pack wall of 89 Don Russ that I could not walk away from either. This is also at Rogers. Um, the guy originally wanted a buck each for these. I didn't really want them that bad, but he was trying to haggle with me there. Um, there's 26 rack packs here. I ended up getting them all for 10 bucks. So worked out. Really good deal. I figured we'd rip some of these open and see if we can find a Griffey, Biggio, John Smoltz, Randy Johnson, Kurt Schilling even. 
But uh, 10 bucks for the whole stack of 26. I thought that was a pretty good deal. Jemmy Mail says, am I giving away all-star tickets tonight? <laughs> no, that's, that is not my deal, man. I think that's uh, I think that's actually having on Eric's Patreon. I don't think I can afford to uh, give away any all-star tickets. Those are so expensive. I know Eric's going to the game, but I think he said tickets were like, I don't know, 200 bucks or something like that. So not something I'll be doing. Last time I was at an All-Star game was 94, though. The uh, Home Run Derby, that's pretty sick. Seeing uh, all the stars back then cranking home runs out of the park. Let's go ahead and look through some of these, rip them open, see if we can pull any Griffies, if you guys don't mind. Um, BS a little bit here. And maybe we'll give some stuff away later on. But best card in here, obviously, Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card and Greg Swindell. And, of course, how could I forget the Alex Madrid card? Alex Madrid. $25,000 card. There's Greg Jeffries, hot card back in the day. Paul Mulder, MVP. And Yount. Chris Bolton's best card is a sweet 50-50 Canseco. I remember that card. I sent your package out today, Chris Bolton. Should be getting it by Wednesday. Here's a $5 Super Chat from Jonathan H. It says, nothing wrong with $10 for some ripping fun. Good good fun will be my whole week on my channel. $10 boxes, ten boxes of nostalgia. Thank you very much, Jonathan H. Really appreciate that. Um, definitely looking forward to checking your channel out all through the week and watching you rip these uh, those older boxes open. Love seeing them. I love, love, love breaking them open myself, so... Definitely check out Jonathan H's channel. If you like the older stuff, even if you like newer stuff, he does both. So you get the best of both worlds there. There's a Glavin. I'm not going to tear open all these. I'll save some to send off to people. But I figure we'll tear open a few of them. See if we can find a Griffey. Or maybe even that sweet uh, Canseco uh, that Chris Bolton was referring to. Here's a five dollar super chat and boom slang it says, "Yo, John bought two hundred ten thousand cards today. Paid three point five cents per card and sorting and watching what you scored. Video will go up later. Also have a five hundred sub giveaway. Thank you so much, boom slang. Really appreciate that. That is pretty awesome. Two hundred ten thousand cards that he's gonna be sorting through or sorting through now and doing a video on. Definitely click on that super chat. And give him a sub. I'm excited to check out what y'all got. And he's heading to five hundred subs. So let's try and get him there tonight." Take a second, click on that, go to channel, subscribe. Thompson is a Griffey in the first pack I opened. Really? Did I miss a Griffey? I don't think I did. Pete Harness rated rookie. Griffey's a pretty uh, distinguishable card. Got to double check. No Griffey in there. Been a long weekend, so maybe I did miss it. I don't know. Felix Jose, rated rookie. It's not what we're looking for, though, but kind of looks the same. Yeah, there's no Griffey in here. Not yet. As Chet Lemon, though, I'm not sure if he's in the stream or not. Boom Slang is sitting at 320. 500 is a way off. Ways off, but that's a goal. Well, every little bit of counts. There's 104 people in here right now. Check out Boom Slang's channel. You will not be disappointed. Thank you again for that super chat. Really appreciate it. Looking forward to see what you what you got in that huge haul. Love buying uh, collections like that as a McGuire. Lee Smith, Robin Yount, Curry Puckett, Carlton Fist. So a nice Hall of Fame pack there. Baseball card collector just subbed to Boom Slang. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate that. I'm sure he does too. And events like Sandberg. No sign of Griffey yet, and no sign of Sabo yet either. These are cut pretty weird. There's a nice Bonds. Ozzy Smith. It's a good thing the Griffey wasn't in that pack. We'll rip through a couple more of these. 
see if we uh, have any luck at all. Who's going to win home run derby? Says Casey Lewis. Um, maybe Yelich. Be pretty awesome to uh, watch that unfold. There's a dollar super chat from Breaks and Stuff. Well, thank you very much, Breaks and Stuff. Really appreciate that. Keeping the lights on here. Tony Gwynn in that, in that pack. Tom Gordon rookie. Not much value to that card, though. Too bad it's not the uh, evil twin Don Gordon from his 89 Bowman. No sign of Griffey yet. These packs are, like, super dirty, too. It's like I've ripped open a lot of uh, packs. It's still like 89 Don Russ. Eh, a lot of people might hate him, but I don't know. Pulling that Griffey card still gets me excited for all these years. I'm sure some of you guys can relate to that. I still get excited about pulling uh, inserts and rookies. As you guys said, uh, Yelich opted out. I didn't even hear about that. It's pretty crazy. There's a Puckett. Pete Alonzo's in it, though, isn't he? If Pete Alonzo's in it, my money's on him. Mike Schmidt. No sign. Oh, there he is! There's the Ken Griffey! Nice! Only took us about four or five rack packs, but sick. Love this card. Really, really awesome. Nice Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card. Pretty good shape, too, overall. He was uh, actually born and raised really close to uh, where Eric and I are from, Charroy, PA. It's like 25 minutes down the road. Um, a lady that actually works for me said that, I think she said she went to school with Ken Griffey Jr. She's, like, from that area. She told me that the other day, Denora. So pretty awesome. I don't think he was really there about that long. He, he moved away and, uh, not too long after that. I think he was there for, like, a year or something like that. But really awesome pool there, Ken Griffey Jr. I guess we'll open, like, maybe another – couple more and see if we can pull a Biggio or a Smoltz or a Johnson or a Schilling. Maybe another Griffey. And then I will uh, save the rest of these, send them off to people. Some people like getting packs. I'll put them in uh, different pack lots for Patreon, things of that nature. Paul says he went to Cincinnati Mulder High School where Barry Larkin also went. Yeah, I think he was uh, in her grade in like I mean, it was fourth or fifth grade or something like that. She told she just told me that story recently. I never knew that. There's a Biggio. Very nice. Craig Biggio rookie card. Nice one. To two nice rookies there and only several packs. He usually picked up that card for not very much these days. Sometimes you can find it in quarter boxes at card shows, 50 cent boxes, even dollar. But still awesome. Still a Hall of Famer rookie card. So I still like pulling them. Still get excited to pull all these... Uh, Junk Wax Rookies and Inserts. These packs are just caked in dust. But a pretty good deal. Ten bucks for everything. I'm not exactly sure what a rack box of 89 Donruss sells for. Probably like 40 bucks. Somewhere around there. So a decent deal for 26 rack packs. It's pretty good luck so far, too, to pull the Griffey out of only a few packs. No sign of Randy Johnson yet. I think we'll open, like, one more after this, and then uh, pretty much call it a night then. It wasn't a huge weekend. Went to a lot of places, but uh, didn't get a lot of stuff. Some things here and there. Pretty stoked on that Jeter today, though. That was a pretty awesome pull. Barry Larkin, Hall of Famer there. Same with Almar. Almar's second year card. And Henderson and Jack Morris, another Hall of Fame pack there. Do one more of these. We'll do a little small giveaway. So I appreciate you guys tuning in, hanging out with me. Last uh, little stack here. And if you guys are interested, I posted a link for it on eBay earlier today. There's a 10-box uh, mixer break coming up on Tuesday here. we got like 14 spots left. Some more high-end boxes in there. If you want to check that out, feel free to do so. Push is off to this side. Mike Jones says, what does a PSA 10 Griffey and Don Russ go for? Um, the PSA 10, probably for that one, probably like, I don't know, 
little under a hundred bucks, maybe. That would be my guess. I don't know exactly off the top of my head. I think the 89 score traded sells for maybe a little close to there as well. So let's pull up the Kahoot. Give a couple things away here. An appreciation of you guys hanging out and your super chats. You guys are awesome. So get your phones ready, get your PCs ready. There's a five dollar super chat again from Jonathan H that says, "If y'all don't buy out that break, I'm gonna buy the rest of the spots. Will be boring to watch me get all the hits. So get on it. Thanks a lot, John H. Really appreciate that. You definitely didn't mention that to me yesterday that uh, if they don't all sell out, then you're gonna buy the rest of them. There's some nice ones in there too. The '93 tops, pull a Jeter. That card's gonna go up um, a decent amount, probably double in value. Maybe pull a Jeter gold and some of those <coughs> Pacific boxes from late '90s are pretty interesting too." There's some pretty um, valuable cards that can be pulled out of those boxes. Let's go ahead and pull this up here. Get ready, guys. Really appreciate that Super Chat, John H. Like I said, definitely check his channel out. He's growing pretty quickly. A little over 300 subs, and he's doing a lot of older box uh, breaks this week, ripping open some old packs for his Nostalgia Week. And he's pulling some good cards. He's got some good luck, so you're not going to want to miss out on that. But here we go, 470815 is the uh, the first pin here. Let me see what we have to give back to you guys. Four seven zero eight one five. So this is for third place. We'll give away three prizes here. This one's for third place. We'll give away two bagel rookie cards. Um, picked up a few of those the other day. Bowman and 91 upper deck. The two nice bag walls there for third place. And then first place tonight, we're going to give away this Jeter again. Um, tried giving away the other night and no one claimed it. So this is open game now. That's the Jeter first place. It's a nice shape that John Biley sent uh, recently. And second place, we'll give away this Kegger Jr. 89 Don Ross rookie card that we just pulled off a pack. So... Third place is Double Bagwells, second place Griffey Jr. Rookie, and first place Derek Jeter. 470815. 35 people in here, we're gonna get started. I think it's long enough, a couple people sliding in here at the end. 470815. 36 people, and let's go. And these are all questions that are based basically on the weekend for the most part, and what you just watched. So. The people that slide in here at the last minute and try to uh, win the giveaways, not going to happen tonight probably unless you were here the whole time. That's my, um, just how I'm going to do it from now on. On the recent Fan Mail Friday, what rookie card was given away as the first place prize? So this past Friday, was it Ken Griffey Jr. rookie, Derek Jeter rookie, Ozzy Smith, or Mike Mussina? The first place prize. Five seconds left for the recent rookie card that was given away. And most of you guys got that right. Ozzy Smith, a lot of people said Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter was actually second place. The first place was Ozzy Smith rookie card, 79 tops. And Carlin 23 got that right. Mrs. Wick in second place and Bill Sites in third. 1,000 points to Carlin 23, so nice job. Question two, what flea market did I pick up the random grab bags with Conseco 86 trade rookie card? So the two that you saw earlier, there was a Jerry Kuzman 69 tops, Conseco rookie card. What flea market was that at? I kind of bounced back and forth, so it's kind of tough to keep track of those, but I said it several times. Was it Four Seasons, Hartville, Rogers, or Ladies? Did I find that on the 4th of July? Most of you guys got that right. Nice job. You guys pay attention really well. It was at Hartville. And Carlin 23, you're crushing it. Bill Sites slides into second place and misses Wicked in third. 
Question three, which rookie card did I pick up over the weekend that I've wanted since I was younger? Was it Nomar, 92 traded, Hideo Nomo, 95 over deck, Conseco, 86 traded, or Derek Jeter, 93 pinnacle? One of that card since the late 90s. Which card was it? Five seconds left. And most of you guys got that right. It was the Jeter 93 Pinnacle. Finally uh, finally picked that up. Happy to have it. Johnny W., you are in first place. Mrs. Wicked in second and Go Sub Wicked in third. Question four. What store did my girlfriend find the newly released Ghostbusters Ectoplasm? Was it five below FYE Gabe's or Family Dollar? The new Ghostbusters Ectoplasm. Pretty stoked about that. Hey, Cody Martin. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining us. Five seconds left. What store was it? Most of you, or a lot of you guys got that right. It was FYE, and they were really expensive. Four bucks per vial. The last ones that came out in 2016 were a dollar a piece. So, quite the price uh, increase there. Johnny W., you are in first. Mrs. Wicked in second. And Go Sub Wicked in third. And the last question here. A few awesome friends have been sending me cards for Fan Mail Friday for what rare set? It's a 94 Fun Pack, 89 Tops, Ghostbusters 2, 91 Fleer, or 91 Desert Shield. Been getting uh, several packages from basically two, two or three people there that uh, are sending me these rare cards. I'm trying to collect the whole set. It is Desert Shield is the correct answer. I think I have about 30 or 40 of those now, too, so pretty sick. And first place goes to Johnny W., Johnny W in first, Mrs. Wicked in second, and Paul Loco is in third. Go Sub Wicked came in fourth, and Bill Sites in fifth. Johnny W, you win the Derek Jeter 93 upper deck. Congrats. It's going to be a, that's, it's already a nice card. It's going to be an even, even nicer card because in the Hall of Fame. Second place, Mrs. Wicked, you won the Griffith Jr., A9 Don Russ rookie, and third place, the Dole Bagwell rookie. So thanks a lot, you guys, for, for, for participating and hanging out with us tonight. Really appreciate it. Hope you liked everything I picked up. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you like that I picked up. And um, I will see you guys Tuesday for Turn Back the Clock Tuesday, 10 box mixer break. And I'll probably have a G.I. Joe for you or a video for you next week sometime and some other stuff as well. So really appreciate you guys hanging out. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'll see you soon.